The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman on this uh, 10th day of June. My pleasure to be here Monday through Friday, noon till 1 p.m. You can reach me at 877-927-6648. And um, what we need to be looking at here is the crude oil. It's down 15 cents. It is not participating together with the market. And that's very interesting because for quite a while now, we've had the market, generally the IYT, that's the transports. Where did I type that? Let me try it over here instead of in the den. IYT, IYT, which is up huge, up 372 at 186.72, up 2.03%, just about to hit the 200 period exponential moving average. Um, not a great pattern in the weekly yet. The monthly chart needs a lot of work, but I'm pleased to see it's running with the Dow. In fact, it's leading the Dow. So this, to me, is something to keep in mind. And the other thing that's really important is that within the context of the markets, what I'd say to subscribers over the weekend, there are some things we're going to be looking at in my, my webinar coming up a Wednesday night, 5 o'clock till 6.30, Wednesday late afternoon. Um, there, there's going to be so many aspects but I'm going to be basing it on a couple of technical tools within the Chapman Wave uh, huge toolbox, Sears and Roebuck toolbox. And, um, and it's demonstrating some strength that you wouldn't really expect to see uh, under these conditions. So by Wednesday, we'll have already had uh, three days of trading. And that's going to be very important. And let me, let me uh, go through a couple of things here a little bit slower. The Dow. Within the Dow context, a uh, question I had was, how come I could not anticipate a V-shaped pattern off the low when I gave the buy signal last Monday at the open? Um, and rather than talking about a rally and then a possible arch formation retest, What's the difference? So I'll deal with that right now because I'll be dealing with it a lot more in my webinar, but I want to explain a couple of things. First of all, you, don't, it's you can only get a V-shaped pattern when the price rises exponentially, uh, pretty much a straight line. Remember in the Chapman Wave, you're always looking for, what are we looking for? We're looking for, whoops, that's not it. That's going to be part of my webinar. Um, let's go to this one here. Oh, I don't have it. Okay, what we're looking for is a straight line move. And that straight line move has to take out all the peaks on the left side that are at least short to near term resistance, break through it. And at the same time, you need a lot of momentum in the MACD and the stochastic, at least for me, to say what we're looking at is the torque, that is the energy uh, that is. The, the actual generation of energy, almost like when you're in um, an electric car, when you put your foot on the gas, there's no gas. When you put, put your foot in the accelerator, there's only a pressurized move down that accelerates the, the uh, electrical components to the point where there's just the, the, the um, gravitational force is really so much greater than say on a, a regular gas engine and normally. And that is what you want to be looking for in the stochastic, that initial thrust to the upside, that rocket ship move. You want it with price and you want the stochastic go, to go from under 20% to over 80% in, usually I like to say within two, three bars. Well, this is bar number five, it's actually six if you include Monday of last week, and the stochastic now is still only under 80% uh, at 79.84. So in that case, that was very difficult to do. Number two is you want the MACD to expand greatly. Well, it's done that. Let me go through. Look at the left side chart. This is the daily. That's the Dow. Here's the S&P. So the S&P has a very nice takeoff. 
NACD is very strong as a takeoff, not very strong in the sense that it's up at 97%. It's, it's, I'm up at the highs. It is just taking off right now. And the stochastic's under 80% at 74%. So that's lagging in a sense, which one way is positive because it still should go to 80%. And the other way it's negative because it's saying price. And the price here is also part of the surprise announcements because for, um, for the president, I was anticipating that he would implement uh, the tariff. And then he'll talk about the actual, um, with Mexico putting in place everything that he wanted. And when he checked it off the list, he would lift the tariff. That's kind of what he was wanting uh, out of um, China. And then he kept raising it, right? So this is a different tactic. As tactics go, I have to admire him. This is a this was to me, at least to me, a surprise. So uh, in tactics, uh, that that's a good tactic because he's still got something left. Now, as far as I'm concerned, I'm just looking at this and I'm saying the S&P has taken out the left side high of May the 16th of 2892.15. There's a 2900 uh, right now. That's very good. The weekly chart still hasn't gone to a leg D over the most recent high of 2949.52. So it's got the whole week to try that. My thinking here is that on a very short term basis, I think we're overbought. And I would not be surprised if we're looking at a peak A probably starting tomorrow, going into maybe Wednesday, uh, some kind of a breather. As to the arch formation, having gone this high, it's going to take just a, a, an extreme an, a, a number of bad news events to really take the S&P back down into the 2830, 2820 area. I'm not saying it can't be done. I'm just saying that that would be unusual after such a big move up like this. You wouldn't get an arch. You get an almost an inverted V-shape that Eiffel Tower straight up, straight down, single leg, A failure. The QQQ has not got the same strength as today, but it didn't have the same strength. The stochastic was running nicely, but it's only at 59%. The MACD is good, but it's way down here. A lot has to happen. Okay, I want you to do that. I want you to show on the left side chart, the daily charts, to talk about talk from the stochastic. MACD has to take over very soon. Okay, got that out the way. Now, as far as the 120 minute chart is concerned, let me just quickly go to this area here before we go to a break. Look, here's the 120 minute chart. We're going to a leg D. D's where other things can happen. I think that's quite likely that we do have some kind of, I'm only saying a bit of a pullback to make a peak in the daily. Look at the strong leg A in the, in the daily on the left here, right here. I'm not sure if this can be called leg one in the Chapman wave. Um, CW5 method, but at this particular point, it is a spectacular move from 24,680 to 26,210. <laughs> I mean, let's face it, that is big. 1,600 points, something like that. Okay, so the MACD is very strong in the 120 minute chart. The stochastic's flattening out at 93.87. I anticipated with this Chapman Wave squash index right here that we got that you go to a peak C, see the stochastic pull back a little bit as the time was taken. It did take time. It took four bars um, in the 120 minute chart before you broke out to leg D. Um, we'll see what happens. You just call the resistance now is at 26,270s on the short term for the Dow and key support will be at uh, 26,000 to 25,980. I'll be right back. That's what's happened. Tiger Technician Tower and the Dow is up 181 S&Ps at 27. Dow's lagging a little bit. I'll be back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien have just announced a special webinar on June 19th for all subscribers to the TAS Profile Scanner. Steve and Tom will break down the trade matrix, market breadth, heat grid, as well as the three-step process you can use with the TAS Profile Scanner to identify market movers and how to capitalize on that move. For all the details and to get started with the TAS Profile Scanner today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. With a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. Go sign up today. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. C C call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. So we're back, and I want you to look at a couple, of, quite, quite a few questions have come in, but let me just do this. I haven't quite finished my overview for the beginning of the week. So gold has pulled back very sharply. The GDX is at a peak E if there's no new high today, and I don't see a new high from uh, Friday's high of 23.17. It's at 22.32. I don't see how that could happen. So what I'm looking at here is within the context of the GDX, which is the gold miners, uh, that is the Van Eck Vectors Gold Miners ETF. It seems to me it's been repelled from the 200 period exponential moving average. Some of the uh, pressure of, uh, how can I put it, the, the geopolitical pressure, the economic pressure is a little bit off here, and that might be why gold is pulling back. The other thing that's really important to me is if you look at the gold chart, the monthly chart, I'm gonna, the GDX, if you squeeze this here, it's still within a trading band. So don't, I wouldn't get too excited. It's a really great trading vehicle, but I don't think it's it's doing all that much. It had a spectacular move from 20.67 up into the 23s. Uh, for it, that was a spectacular move to the upside because it had been faltering. But I don't yet see it have the strength. If by the end of the week it's trading at 23.42 or higher, I'd be very impressed. At the same time, we were looking at silver and saying silver is still lagging. It's only at a B, and then it's had a sharp pullback today, minus 0.37 at 14.655. So the weekly chart has gone straight back into this trading band. The monthly chart still looks poor. If you look at the EUR, USD, the euro, the euro dollar currency pair, yep, that's had a nice move. It's finally tried to spike above uh, the, here we go, ab above the week, the daily down channel. It has, it's gone to a peak B, A minus and a B minus many times before, not many, but a couple of times before. It's done this again at 1.13. It better hold the low that was made from not, no, 1. 1. 1. It better hold 1.122 or 1.120 over the next few days. Otherwise, I think it's going to go down even deeper. So this is very important. If it can break into the 1.35, area that'll be excellent action uh, i don't know if i can do that usd jpy which is the yen uh trading up a little bit up 0.32 at 108.53 has to go to the 1.9s sorry 109.0 area 
to to show any kind of strength at all. It's just stuck more in the down down uh, end of the channel than and the up. And let me just once again show the dollar. The dollar had a really sharp move. I said to subscribers to my opening call, but along the dollar from over a year ago at 90. Uh, I'm expecting some kind of a consolidation here. I still think weekly chart says that this is this is the currency du jour of the year. Actually, um, we'll see. And in the meantime, it held the 200-period moving average. It went to 96.45. That's at 96.45, uh, 46, and it's that that level is at one um, at 96.45. So it missed it by 0.01. And I think it's going to chop chop here. But if it's able in the next week and a half, without breaking into the 95s, if it's able to get to 97.45, I would be very impressed with that action. That means that I'm correct in saying it's consolidating because it's got a sell mode in the daily, but a sell signal in the weekly. We'll have to wait for this Friday to see if it becomes a sell mode. The monthly chart is still in a buy mode. OK, now I wanted to show you something even more important. Um, <clears throat> Within the context of the VIX index, the VIX right now is still showing some strength. It's it's down just six ticks at 16.24. In the 16 says that some buying, uh, insurance buying is going on. But if it starts to rally because the market slides later today or tomorrow, if in the next two days it trades at 17, 17.20, that's suggesting that the market is a little overbought and it should be having some kind of a uh, pullback. OK, now, um, now questions came in. The first question was way back, if I can find it here, could I look at, uh, that's at 12 o'clock. There it is. I uh, wanted to get in the queue. Could you, NVTA, NVTA, which is not NVIDIA. This is NVTA. I did it again. I think typed in the wrong place. <laughs> NVTA, here we go. Trading at? Um, 19.97 up a dollar oh five. Whoa, this is nice action. Invitia Corp uh, Diagnostic Genetics. And I can't remember what I said the other day because there was that huge gap and then it was really struggling making a cup formation. I do like it. I, I actually on Friday I wasn't I don't think I was asked about it. I didn't like it too much on Thursday. Friday's action was very good, and I might have said, Yep, yeah, I would do a little nibbling. Of course, by today, it's already up quite a bit. What would I do now? I'd still say I like it. I like the fact that it's acting well in this environment It's and holding well. I'm going to say at $20, $20, I would prefer on this candle, if you could wait a little bit, maybe more towards the mid-19s, but actually because I think it's going to try to fill the gap, that's with a high of 21.12 on the 8th and the low the day before, on the seventh, a low of 23.68. That is the huge uh, three and a half point gap. I think it's going to try to get there. So I don't say I'm going to be. In, I'd be in a rush, but I would just start a little position in this area, preferably in the 1970s. But 30 cents is not going to make a difference at this particular point. It's really just a starter position. Um, so now what I'm looking at within the uh, NVTA is. Um, at up 1.12, the MACD is good, and the stochastic actually has now gone to 75%. So yes, treat it as a recovery. It, I, don't, I wouldn't treat this as a new buy signal. It's just the start of something that could be good because of that big gap. That's going to be a big hindrance and, and um, a cap on the upside. Had a question uh, earlier if I would go to the, um, oh, this is uh, so 1529 on the rut. But I want you to look at the ESM. I was trading the right earlier on. So I've got that notated. I don't have, I have the 10 minute E mini trading at a peak D with a high of 2905.75. And that's gone with the MACD just turned negative. Stochastic is at 73%. Uh, yeah, I think this is, I, I've been looking at the Dow and I'm, I, United, United Technologies is part of the problem. But it actually didn't. None of the market is acting all that well. I didn't think from the opening. I would have thought that the futures were up uh, maybe 18 to 20 points in the E-mini, and the Dow would be up 230 to 240, and then it would hold it and use that to accelerate higher. I'm kind of I, I'm looking at this, and I just think we're a little bit overbought uh, on a shorter term, and I just would not be surprised if by Tuesday we are correcting. So let me just do this real quickly. 
uh, chap wave methodology if I can. Uh, I don't know if I can. This is A. I'll just do it visually. A, B, C, D. This is a peak E in the in the five minute chart. There was a D in the uh, ten minute chart. Yeah, starting this consolidation. I can just give you this at the moment. It's got a nice little uh, bout of support right there, 28.97, 30. This doesn't know about 25 cent increments. So that 28.97 area, good support, could be a bounce. It would not be surprising to me if we uh, are seeing some intraday high, some pullback, and if we don't break above 29.08 by um, 3 o'clock, Instead, we are a little bit lower. We're down at the 29, 28.96 area. I think we've started a consolidation going into tomorrow. So we've got that out the way. I'll be back. A lot of more questions coming up here. Uh, what was that? Uh, could I look at? I want to get ready for that. What was it? Um, yeah, I'll go back to the GDX in a moment. Basil Chapman has a special subscriber webinar coming up Wednesday, June 12th at 5 p.m. called The Tide. In this webinar, Basil will be demonstrating techniques that can help one identify whether the tide is coming in or going out. That is, whether a trend is bullish or bearish in a variety of time frames. And Basil will be speaking specifically to indices, currencies, commodities, interest rates, and key stocks. The technical tools that Basil will be discussing are available on almost all software packages that will be shown in historical context as well as live for current market setups. Identifying the key trend allows one to trade with the tide rather than against it. Subscribers also gain immediate access to three archive workshops so you can get started right away when you sign up. For all the details on the opening call and Basil's upcoming subscriber webinar, The Tide, this coming Wednesday, visit the front page Page of TFNN.com and sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Let me just go through these uh, questions that I have. So the GDX is pulling back sharply. I think 22.15 What is the nine period exponential moving average support in the uh, green line in the daily. And then 2184 will be the next. Now, I don't think that gold has to just smash to the downside and give it all back. I'm just saying that I think gold is just at this particular moment, it's just gone out of favor. It's had its big move. It needs to digest. If it starts to trade underneath 2150 this week, that's going to be very poor action for the weekly chart. I don't know if it will because the technicals are still actually pretty good. 
on the upside, if there is a push, uh, dollar actually starts to break down again instead of holding nicely here. And at 23.12 is the high of the of Friday. If there is a move into the 23.22-ish area, that would be really good action. I just don't think it's ready for that right now. It's digesting. Next thing I've got here is um, within the context of uh, questions in the den uh, was Cronus, C-R-O-N. This is a this is a cannabis um, stock uh, C R O N is the symbol 17.18 up a dollar 24 had a very nice gap up spike the other day about four days ago pulls back holds didn't take out the low of the spike has a good session today the weekly chart says hey this is what you want to see this is exactly what you want to see now I don't know whether the person's long or short or just looking for an entry point. At 1717, I like the action because it finally says that that weekly chart is the stochastic finally turned up. Well, it's a two and a half hour, three hours into the uh, uh, first trading day of the week. So all I can say is that at this particular point, this looks nice. The week, monthly chart needs a lot of work, but it says that the daily chart is helping the weekly chart. That's exactly what you want to see. So I'm going to say to you, if you aren't long at 17.18 at right now, if you aren't long, I would start a position in Cronus. It's a tough one because that gap said that it should have pulled back a little deeper. But then the technicals came on strong. So this move up today is exactly what you wanted. Because if it was just meh, nothing today, that would have said, oh, oh, you've got to wait. Breaking out like this is, there is interest. I just want to see if there's volume. There is on balance, a lot of on balance volume, but not 5.6, 4.5, what was that? 17. So it's already just three hours into the day, over three hours, five. You got a, another three hours, three hours. I don't think we're going to get the same kind of volume as we got four days ago, but this is good action. So I'm saying if you aren't in it and you're looking to get in, yes, I would, I'd say, okay, you can get in, but um, I treat it as the a first entry. And I'd even give it a couple of days if it spikes up again tomorrow and goes towards 17, 78 or 18 dollars. That is outstanding action. Then I think you're going to have to follow the move up because the trend will have changed. But this is just the first really good green candle. So Kronos, yes, I like it. I, I don't think it's ready for the big move yet. I think it's getting ready over a period of weeks it'll take. But in the meantime, this is this, this is exactly the kind of stock I would look for to say first real sign of strength break out over the high of four days ago. That's good. It needs to hold above that high. Okay, next thing we've got here is a question about, hmm, a question about, uh, where was it? Uh, square. Square. Very nice move up, but the weekly chart says, wow, a lot of work needs to be done. The monthly says, wow, a lot of, 101 all-time high in October. Square point of sale, um, uh, managing receipts, uh, breaks down. Plummets down to the 60, uh, yeah, 50 area, rallies up to the 80s, comes back down to 60. Now it's on its way, trying to get back up. I think this is that rotational aspect, and I think stocks like Square are now a little bit more free to hold support and try to make higher highs and higher lows this week. And I'm going to be watching it closely. Yes, I hope that helps you. That's 7133 SQ up 285. I would put it this way. You've now got very strong, if you're looking more intermediate term, 68 to 67 is going to be very strong support that must hold. But on the upside, if it gets to, if it starts to fill this gap, that horrible gap down on the second, um, if we can get into the 70.60 area, oh, it's just done that. Good. So it's into the, into the gap. I like that. Okay, Square's looking way better. Next thing we want to look at is... Uh, question on, oh, just to follow up on that V-shaped pattern. Look, yes, this is not even like a V-shaped pattern because it took out the left side low and square. So you really want to see the technicals confirming it. So just to answer this, the question again, let me go back to the Dow. To get, when you're down this low, with so much uh, work to be done in the, say, in the, the the weekly chart and the day, not so much the monthly, monthly is actually looking quite good, but this weekly chart is suggesting a lot more technical work has to be done for you to say everything's in, in technically a buy mode. It's not even close, not even a buy signal yet. On the technicals, not the price, the weekly chart of the Dow has gone back to buy mode. 
but the, the technicals are saying, no, it needs a lot more work. So looking at a shorter term, I want to see a V-shape. The definition of a V-shape pattern is that you're starting to go towards or taking out the left side high. That's at 26,695. And look at the, so we've taken out the shorter term one. So just to answer that question again, if the stochastic starts to hold at 82, 84% as, as each pullback is held very tight and you go to higher highs, higher recovery highs, that is, that's very positive. We haven't done that. The stochastic's still under 80%. So this is a work in progress. I said that to subscribers right and said it again over the weekend. It's a work in progress. Um, it, it isn't just on the fact that the stochastic has gone from under 20% to over 80%. That is part of the puzzle. You have to have the price movement. You have to have the MACD. We've got almost everything, but not the stochastic yet in about the 82 to 84% area. Okay, just quickly, one asked about that. Yes, there's your e-money. Pulling back very sharply, the RTY M19 is now at 152710. Have you made? I, I can't do this quickly. I'm not sure if that was a PD alternate count, but yes, we are pulling back. That's what I was expecting um, for this move up in the in the in the markets. We kind of run out of uh, energy to the upside. We need a day or two of rest. Just the way I'm looking at it. Next question I had was in the den. Um, Oops, did I get it? Got that, I got that, I got that, got that. Um, okay, yes. This is um, this is not a, a, a den question, but I just wanted to say the IWM, look, the IWM has been the weakest of the indices. It has made, it looks like a V, but it's not the powerful uppercase V. This is like a lowercase V, and it hasn't even taken out the first really important left side 200 period moving average, 153's peak uh, right here on the 21st. It's gotten to 153.14 today, but it hasn't taken it out. It hasn't gone above into the 154.04 area. So this is going to be very important. What happens? And I want everything in sync. So I've covered a chunk of things now. XLF. The XLF is moving up very nicely, up 37 at 27.49. One of the reasons we added to our um, financial, our, our bank stock that we've had for a long time, we've had it as, as a position that we've bought at a certain level and taken profits as it spiked higher and came back down and then we get back in at that same level-ish. We've just done that again, added to it, to, got a second position. And the reason is I think the financials are going to be important in this whole phase. You've got to see them holding or doing well. Uh, Goldman Sachs, yes, quick question about Goldman. Beautiful day today, up five at 195. This rotation going through the different sectors really is important. I'll talk about it when we get back. And don't forget my webinar. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from 30000 to 75000 The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. What would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South 
African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Hi, folks. So this is going to be a very important moment for my, for my webinar on Wednesday night at 5 o'clock. I, I'm actually I decided uh, that I would over the weekend I just did more and more and more work in terms of what is important what will be important to subscribers over the coming many weeks in fact a couple of months and I decided that I would spend a lot of time yes I'm going to talk about everything I discussed and go through the different indices etc but I'm going to show you some technical tools within the Chapman Wave methodology that I think can really help you in your day trading and in your intraday trading, but especially in the way you're looking at the market over the, uh, the different stocks that you might have, different indices, because um, it's much more important for me. I, I, I want to give you the tools so that when I do my uh, show and when I do my newsletter, you understand exactly, and for a couple of people who have asked me if I could just give a little bit more of an explanation for my Trader's Corner and exactly how you, we, we, you read the Trader's Corner. I'm finishing something up now. I'll send it out. Maybe I'll send it out today. I'll send it out um, <clears throat> tomorrow morning with my newsletter. And it's just how to read my Trader's Corner. But most importantly, uh, what is, what, what's going on right now, and that's the reason why we've been trying to set up to be able to take it full advantage of having positions in areas that I think are 2020 areas of importance. Uh, and that's the reason why I finally put a stop on that uh, short trade that we had in the in the SM, SMHs. We were short, for, the top was 120. We were short from 116 and it went down. We took profits all the way down to the uh, 98s. And now it's having a really good session. And it's just a very good session so far. It's a meaningless in terms of the weekly chart, but it's really important in the daily chart. That is a nice takeoff from the 200 period moving average hit Friday and then bounced off right through the 50 period moving average today at 107.26 up 316. So that's a good sign. I still think there's more consolidation going on, but it's great that it's working uh, in the SMHs. Uh, the other thing is within the context of the different uh, stocks and indexes, we have a couple of things that we have that I consider to be very important looking out in this whole mix of what's working and what's not working. So all of our stocks are actually doing really nicely here because we chose them very carefully. Someone asked me about my PLD. Uh, you know, I don't like to talk about these things. How else would you know what's going on in my work if I actually didn't show it? Prologis is something that we've been in since a week ago, about a week, no, less than a week ago. We got in at 75 um, on the 4th, the day after the low. We got in right here at 75, and it was running up, and it broke this, this channel, uh, Basil Chapman's, <laughs> that's the Chapman wave, um, falling axe formation in the cup. 
ascent and it broke it broke through it it went to the Chapman wave left side right side price time match in a shorter time frame about the, above the 78.56 high of the 1st of May went from 78 down to the low of 73 I think it was 72.50 that was on the 31st of May now it's trading at 78.20 it's making a potential peak A and that's what I'm expecting that the the, the strong leg up that we've seen in the indices that we're probably going to make some kind of a peak starting today going into Tuesday. But look at this. We've gone to your leg D. That's what you want in the Chapman Wave methodology. Um, it's very important to be able to get um, that, that fourth leg to the upside. And it's a leg D extension in the monthly chart. So this is doing everything we want. I think that this goes into the category. I didn't even check of the IYR, which is the U.S. REITs index. It is a REIT and uh, this is that pattern. Look, here it is. There's an F slash B in the daily on the I IYR right in the zone of um, Chapman Wave. There we go. Chapman Wave inside track. I'm just drawing it. Sorry, I just took a moment here. Make that red so you can see it exactly. It's, it got repelled at the inside track repellent line. And we're going to see, and it's only a C in the uh, weekly chart of the IYR. So this is going to be uh, very interesting because I, this says to me that you've been in a channel and you're just going up and down, up and down to the top of the inside track repellent zone to the bottom of the propellant zone. Is it on the way down now? That will probably be impacting uh, the PLD. Maybe I have to, not OLD. What is OLD? That looks beautiful. The long-term care. Oh, write that down. <laughs> OLD. Got it. Old. Looks very fresh. Now, PLD. Uh, let's see that one more time. Yeah. Is that an... No, that can't be an EE. -E. This is an A, a brand new A for the um, daily chart of PLD. So that's a little bit different to what we were looking at earlier on in the IYR. So, huh. That's very... It's going to be interesting to see how this plays out this week. Okay. TLT. Interest rate. TLT right now is down 127 at 130.47. So that says the um, bonds, the money's coming out of bonds today and possibly going into stocks. But I think it's in the XLK that we're really seeing the big move. XLK is up. Yep, there it is up very nicely, up $1.10 at 77.29. It is the S&P Select Tech Spider Fund. This is going to be important because if either in June or July, if it goes by into the 80s, it's trading at 77.30. It has not only recovered, it starts a leg C at 79.25 in the weekly chart. That helps the, the uh, monthly chart, and that is really a very big positive. Hmm. I'm impressed. So now let's go back to uh, what we were talking about just a moment ago. I was talking about bonds, and if you look at the U.S., this is the actual bond continuous contract, made a peak D, it's kind of stalling, made a cup formation. It does, it's not breaking down. If it goes from 153.18 right now down a point, if it breaks into the 152 point, actually if it goes under 152, the market will continue higher and bonds will see some kind of a pullback and rates will start to rally. I think I've answered a bunch of the questions that have come so far. Uh, one more coming in. Oh, a bunch more coming in. Um, yes. Okay. So within context of the markets, um, I did the XLF, I did that, I did that, did that, did, did the GDX. Um, so high-grade copper. High-grade copper is trading right now at um, a nice move up, up 0.03 at 2.65, but the chart says, wow, a lot of work needs to be done. Monthly chart went underneath the major uptrend support level. Um, this is going to be, this is going to be tough. Uh, you want to see it up in the 275 to 280 level sometime in June. That's going to be important. I also got a question. Yeah, we'll do the. Uh, so wheat is up a dollar and a quarter at 505 and three quarters. Held the 14 period exponential moving average. Uh, soy beans trading at uh, 864, up seven, up eight actually right now. Yeah, it's holding well. It's gone above the 14-period moving average again. And corn, talking about corn here in Boston, those brunes were amazing, huh? We've got all, all our teams. I mean, when you think about it as a sports town, but if you go to the Boston Symphony, one of the greatest orchestras in the world, 
Ah, Boston's an amazing city. Uh, baseball, basketball, ice hockey, football. Nah, not bad, huh? All right, let's go to uh, corn. Corn is down a quarter, holding the 14th period moving average. Uh, I want to see these grains start to move very much uh, more to the upside in another few days. I'll be back. Dow's up 146. Let's go to our E-mini, ESM19. Uh, I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge, heard here at TFNN.com. So let's just do this real quickly because uh, we're all looking at uh, the Dow just getting to this area where I am anticipating there's going to be a resistance. Doesn't mean to say it has to be. I'm just saying this is the way I'm looking at it. And if there's a pullback, I would not be surprised that we're up 147 right now. Uh, we're up 220 or something earlier on. I would not be surprised if we pull back and go into some part of uh, Friday's candle, 25,950 to 25,850 25, 25, area. Uh, and we'll see if it gets deeper than that. That's one thing. I'm not sure yet because I think a lot of people must have missed out on the move. It was so quick last week. So... So let me just talk about what I'll be discussing in my webinar on Wednesday for subscribers. It's a subscriber-only webinar. You can join. You get a free uh, month, and you get uh, my newsletter. You get the you get the use of um, my webinar as well as other webinars you can uh, arc that are archived. This webinar will be archived. I'm talking about what particular tools am I looking at here that's really going to be very helpful in all your trading, but what is really important in our outlook 
for the monthly charts. It's going to be so, to me, this is going to be quite critical how uh, it's interpreted uh, this, this month, these particular indexes, and, and how we're able to use it. Just a really important, I'm going to go through it. Why we're along, our, all our positions are up very nicely, some are up very, very sharply um, uh, today and, yet, and Friday. So I, I like what I'm seeing. And most importantly, I just wouldn't be too anxious right at this moment to be shorting, unless it's just a quick intraday short, a very quick short. But keep in mind that it's the surprise factor that always takes place. And if you didn't get long any time last week, are you going to get long today? Aren't you going to say, wow, if I get long today, I could be getting the short-term top? Or if it pulls back, you say, uh-oh, is this the big pullback? Uh, should I get in? And these big questions lurk. They sit there on your shoulder, waving, wagging their fingers, which is why I was so thrilled that we were able to get the low last week, because it just gives us this cushion to be able to take a little breather and say, OK, pull back. Let's see what kind of strength you've got if you pull back, because we like what you're looking at. Um, so my webinar coming up on Wednesday night. Hope you can join. And I'll be back tomorrow. Have a great day. Stay tuned, tuned for Steve Day.